Ecclesiastes chapter 9. It's the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. It's going to be after Song of Solomon's trust me, I tried to find it this morning. That threw me for a loop. Chapter 9. Yeah, chapter 9. You get a second, man. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is written by King Solomon. Very wise man. Yes. Okay. Now, I want to, I want to uh, get you to see this very clear so you don't think. Because a lot of us, how many of us can are, are, are bold enough or, or, to say right now that you've definitely been going through some trials that you've been trying to seek your way through? I know I have. I'm praying to God every day, trying to find answers to things. And I'm like, Lord, I need you. I, I need you to show me what I can do to get through this. And God keeps reminding me, it's not about what you can do, but what I can do for you. I need you to rest in, rest in me. I'm like, okay. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to rest. But then I feel like sometimes I'm the only one going through stuff. Come on, understand me. Everyone else is looking all smiling around me, and I'm going through my own situation. And then God brought me to the scripture, and it made me feel so much better. Take a look at Ecclesiastes yeah, chapter 9. Everybody see it? Verse 11. Let me know when you get there. Amen. Okay, check it out. This is Solomon. He just had all these revelations. He goes, I, he goes, I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor bread to the wise, nor riches to men of understanding, nor favor to men of skill, but time and chance happens to them all. I'm not the only one. Come on now. Right? Look at verse 12. For man also does not know his time. Like fish taken in a cruel net, like birds caught in a snare. So the sons of men are snared in an evil time. Someone say evil time. Evil time. Okay, say it one more time. Evil time. When it falls suddenly upon them. Okay? I want you to be conscious, church, not of the devil but of Christ, but also recognize the evil day when it comes. Every believer goes through an evil day. That's a time where the enemy attacks you. And on that day, the success of that, how you're going to feel that day, is based on what you're focused on, either Christ or the attack. Okay? Now, I'm not going to say the devil's going to come into your room and, Rah! you know what I'm saying? Because that would scare me. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, God's grace is sufficient. He wouldn't allow that to happen because I'd probably jump out the window and you wouldn't see me next Sunday, right? I'm kidding. No, but, um, <laughs> right? But the enemy attacks you. And the number one place he attacks is going to be up here. But he can't just attack your mind all the time. Okay? He's got to take circumstances and things around you to affect the way you think about yourself and other things around you. He's got to affect your husband to affect you. He's got to affect your wife to affect you. Right? He's got to affect your children to affect you. He's got to go after the things that you love. The only way you can bring a man down is to attack what he loves. You don't attack what he cares about. Attack what they love. Okay, this is pretty irrelevant, but check this out. I, I like comic books and stuff. So, I was... <laughs> I know a metaphor. I was watching Spider-Man in the movie theater. Awesome movie. Then I went and saw Batman also. Awesome movie. And there's one common thing. <laughs> to bring these powerful men down, the bad guys had to attack what they loved. And it was the girl of their dreams. Yeah. The one they never got to tell how much they loved. Once they got that girl, the dude lost his mind. Everything started crumbling around him. Amen? The enemy comes in the same way. He attacks what you love. So he can attack you. And what he's attacking is also... For that person, something else that they love. It's this huge circle. Yeah. All I'm saying to you is be conscious of the enemy. Mm -hmm. That he's not trying to necessarily come in and kill you with a knife, but he's attacking what you love to attack you. Mm -hmm. That way you could not focus on Christ, but focus on what you think you're losing. Mm -hmm. Or focus on what you think is just being come destroyed. On. Or focus on what you think you don't have. Come on. Remember the 80-20 rule? <laughs> you got 80%. You trip over the 20. The 80 is greater than the 20. 20 is not that big of a deal. You got 80%. You got 80 and you wish you had 20. So what well, about this? You get the 20 and lose the 80. No, not, not a good exchange, right? That's not equivalent exchange. I don't know if I can handle that. None of us could. But be thankful for what you have. Confess Christ. Fear the one who has the power, not the one who doesn't. 20% is nothing. Amen. Amen, church? Amen. But this stuff happens to everyone. Yes, it does. Right? When you're not alone, you're not by yourself, right. we're all going through, and the evil day comes. Okay, so the question pops up. So when the day comes, how do I, how do I handle this? 
How do I go up against the enemy? How do I do this? Okay? Let's go to Ephesians chapter 6. When you get a second man, I'll show you what we're called to. Amen. We're going there, right? Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. It'll, it'll hit right at home, I promise you. Ephesians 6, when you get a second man. All right, chapter 10. Verse 10, excuse me. I do it all the time. Chapter 6, verse 10. Everybody see it? Okay. Listen to what Paul is saying. Finally, my brethren, check this out. Now, you all got to hear this. Finally, my brethren, be strong in Yahweh, in the Lord, and in the power of whose might? Who, so, so who are we strong in the Lord, in the power of whose might? So, so who's, is, is it our might? No. Are we strong in ourselves, in the power of our might? No. Okay, so he who seeks to save their life in the power of their own might will lose it. Okay? He who loses his life for Christ's sake will save it. Amen? Check it out. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Mm -hmm. Okay? So you can only stand against the enemy if you are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You cannot stand against the enemy in the power of your might. That's right. Come on now. And that can't do it. The enemy comes in to attack what you love. You don't get to fight him like Batman fought the bad guy. Going in swinging with your arms and fists. No. You stand in the power of his might, Jesus. He's our hero. Amen? He's our savior. Right? So if you have to call a distress signal or turn on the bat symbol or the Jesus symbol, the big light in the sky, just call him. Amen? Yeah, stand on it. Amen, stand church? Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay. Verse 12. Check it out. Now, this tells you we're not fighting against each other. That's right. Okay? Come on. Now, now church, if the enemy attacks you, if the enemy is attacking you for what you love, you have to understand he's attacking you about what you love. He's also attacking what you love. Please understand this. So not only you being attacked, but what you love is being attacked too. Mm -hmm. So you may be fighting with the thing you love when the thing you love is being attacked against you. And the fact that that thing is being attacked is because it's attacking you to get the thing that you love. Yeah. <laughs> You're both being attacked. Please understand it. Yeah. The problem is we don't know how to see outside of ourselves. Like, it's just Come me. On. But, but King on. Solomon said... I realized under the sun that everybody's going through. Yeah. Come on now. <laughs> it's not just me. Yeah. Teach it, sir. I'm being discouraged. She can't encourage me. Well, it's probably because she's discouraged. Come on, that's my pastor. No. Amen? <laughs> Come on now. Right? Come on. Well, we this. aren't the only ones going through. Yeah. Teach Amen? this. Praise the Lord, right? Amen. Verse 12, for we do not wrestle against each other or flesh and blood, mm -hmm. but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of, of darkness of this age, against a spiritual host of wickedness in heavenly places. Wow. Heavenly what? Places. Places. That word is plural. Yes. It doesn't mean there's a heavenly place. <laughs> heavenly places. Amen? Bible scholars will teach. They, they, they've learned through, through scriptures that, that there's three heavens, the physical cosmos, spiritual heaven, and the highest heaven. God himself is, they call him, uh, praise the Lord God, the most high. Because God is the, the most high God. There's no God above him. And right. you, go, you get to Yahweh in heaven, you have completed the beginning of the beginning and beyond beginning. Yeah. The endless past. Right. It doesn't go beyond, beyond God, right? You get into the second heaven, it's a spiritual dimension, right? Angels, demons, spiritual warfare, right? You get into the physical cosmos, hey, here we are. On the yes. Planet Earth, yes. things, universes, planets, uh, cosmos, galaxies, right? Um, we war against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places, right? Spiritual dimension and physically on this earth, right? The devil wars against you, okay? Let's take a look at what the scripture says. Therefore, verse 13, Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. In what day? The evil day. Okay, there's been some mistranslations of that scripture. They, they, a lot of people think that the evil day means um, revelations when uh, the Antichrist comes. It's not that day. It's not that day. That day isn't the evil day. You know how I know? Because Paul says, redeem the time for the days are evil. Right. So tomorrow could be your evil day. 
Oh, Beyond church today could be your evil day. Oh, like, really? Your day of rest could be the day the enemy attacks you every single time. That's it. Come on. I've learned the more I don't do stuff and sit around, the more I think about the problems and get depressed. I learned that when I focus on Christ, the more I'm focused on me, the more I don't like me. Amen? i got to replace me with Jesus and just see how God sees me. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Look at the mirror and say, you are something. <laughs> Instead of all the times I say, look at you, you. You know that? Come, come on, you know what I'm saying? Come on, man. Don't touch too many, but come on. <laughs> no, about, we all have our things. For real, though. No. Right? And, and, and what someone sees in you doesn't mean you see that in you. Come on, man. Hey, man. Someone say, you're fine. Don't worry about this and that. But you're not the person with the worry. Right? But look in the mirror and say, I am. Somebody. Hallelujah. <laughs> I am. Hallelujah. Somebody. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Because you are in Christ. Yes. Amen. Yes. If God loved you enough to send his only begotten son, church, you obviously are somebody. Come on now. King David said in his his uh, his Psalms, What is man that you are mindful of him? That the Son of Man would visit him, that you have crowned him, made him lower than the angel. Come on. Wow. Just a little bit lower than the angel. Amen? Praise the Lord. So the evil day could be tomorrow. It could be Tuesday. Yeah. It's random. Mm -hmm. But how do you withstand the enemy? Putting on the whole armor of God. Check this out. The Bible says in verse 13 that you'd be able to withstand. Okay? That word withstand in the, the Greek is the word antihistamine. Where we get the English word what? Antihistamine. It means you have the right in Christ to resist. Amen. Amen. In Christ, the power to resist. You're sick. You take an antihistamine. It resists the sickness. Mm -hmm. Literally. Amen. Amen. So when you stand in Christ, the Holy Spirit, God is resisting your tribe. Mm -hmm. Is resisting the enemy. Is standing against. Yes. Amen. Yes. Without the power of God, you don't stand against the enemy. Yes. Amen. Right. You get devoured. Yep. Amen. And that's some revelation for you, right? Oh, yeah. Verse 14. Check it out. Now, here we go. Yes. Oh, let me read verse 14 again. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with what? Truth. Having put on the breastplate of what? Righteousness. Righteousness. Amen. And having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Okay? You know where preparation just means that it's already, it implies that it's already been prepared. Uh -huh. So the good news is already established in Christ. Already done. So, 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 church, the preparation of the gospel of peace isn't this idea that you have to prepare gospel or greatness. No, it's already been done in Christ. So, Leo, it's finished. Right? So, so you stand in the finished work of Christ. Good work. Good work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stand in the finished work, not on your own effort. Stand Come in Christ, on, right? Right. Mm -hmm. right. That's why you don't go chasing your kid when he goes to the parties you didn't know about. Come on. You don't go chasing after your husband if he's being quiet. He's probably being no. attacked. Come you don't on. go chasing after your wife because she's. A you don't go chasing after all these things. You stand. In the, you just pray yeah. and trust that Christ. Yeah. And how he was doing a good work. Yeah, yeah. Them. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We'll conclude it. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That way you can stop being so stressed out. You can chill. Right. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> Praise the Lord, right? Okay, have you tried to speak with the preparation of the gospel of peace? Yes. Above all, take yes. the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. You resist the devil steadfast in the faith. Mm -hmm. That's how you block the darts. Bow, 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 bow. With your faith, you keep believing. What's the devil after? This. What you believe. Right. Yeah. Keep believing. Keep believing. Amen? Praise the Lord. Take the, the shield of faith with which you be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Yeah. Now look at verse 18. Praying always Pray all with all ways. prayer and supplication in what? The Spirit. Spirit. Being watchful to this end, and with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Amen. 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 Interesting, that word prayer in verse 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication. Um, the cross-reference scriptures to go with that are in 1 Corinthians and other scriptures. It's talking about speaking in tongues. That's right. Because the Bible says that the Spirit makes intercession in your weakness, for you yes. do not know what to pray. Yes. Right? right? Yeah. Yes. 
And man, that's praying with supplication. You don't know what to say? Give it to God. Speak in tongues in the Old Testament. Amen. When they were angry with God, they murmured, uttered, and muttered under their breath. Through the wilderness, the Bible says they murmured and complained. They need to murmur as to mumble. Right? And, and the grace of God was with them the whole time. Right? Mm -hmm. Supplying manna for them every day. Uh, a, a glory cloud to cover the suns. They wouldn't be burnt. Right? Mm -hmm. But then in the new covenant, God replaced their murmuring with tongues. The Bible yeah. says that the Holy Spirit fell upon them and they all spoke in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So they uttered words that they, that they, that they themselves couldn't understand. Be but the perfect. Spirit was praying in perfect. their weakness. Yes. Yeah. Because where they were going was a new thing, a new covenant. That you could not, no man could fathom what a new covenant would be, but the Holy Spirit prayed in their weakness. Mm. On the day of Pentecost. Awesome. So Paul went on teaching in the new early church that people receive the gift of the Spirit through tongues. A lot of uh, churches to this day don't believe in tongues. They think it was just for the apostles. But if that were the case, the apostles wouldn't have gone on in the early church teaching people to speak in tongues. Right? right? Saying, be filled with the Spirit, speak. Amen. Right? So we have to understand that we stand up against the enemy and the, and the tools God has given us. And they all depict what Christ has done. You're saved because of Jesus. You're righteous because of Jesus. Your faith is in Jesus. Your peace is because of the good news about Jesus. Yes. Amen? Okay. Think about it. It's all his effort towards you. The helmet is your salvation. The sword is the word. How it says the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Your weapon is Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Good teaching. Think about it. Your weapon is Jesus. That's why there is going to one day rise up an anti-Christ. Mm -hmm. Not an anti-word or an anti-sword or an anti-helmet <laughs> or an anti-Michael Jackson <laughs> or Lady Gaga. Come on. Either. Not the devil or people. Right. right? Keep real with it. It wasn't Elvis, was it? It wasn't Michael Jackson because he passed oh, away, right? Real it wasn't Whitney Houston, she passed away. It was not, I don't think it's going to be a singer. Let's think people who sing alone, right? <laughs> Let's move on. Amen? Our weapon against the enemy is our faith in Jesus. Amen. That's why Paul, who understood like the Roman society and pretty much dominated during this time frame, he had to use a Roman soldier's uniform to explain what this armor, what it would look like. Right? Because people had to have a picture of something strong, so we used the Roman armor to yeah. describe the power you have in Christ. Yeah. Right, right. Amen? Right. But it's all in Jesus. The good news, right? right? The gospel of peace, the sword of the spirit. I mean, it's all Christ. So, church, I want to encourage you. Stand with Jesus till the end. Yes, man. When you confess, confess the goodness of Christ. When you confess Jesus, he confessed you for his father. Amen? Stand in Christ. Stand, and having done all to stand, stand. Right. When the enemy comes in like a flood, stand. When you hear what you don't want to hear, stand. Amen. When people talk about you, stand. Even if it's true, stand. Come on now. Amen. When your children are displaying behavior that you can't control, stand. Not against them, against the enemy's attack on them to attack you. Amen. Right? We're not using religion to fix people. Amen? God isn't into fixing your behavior. He's into transforming your heart. Because whatever, whatever soul man believeth, so is he. It's right believing that produces right living church. Yes, not right is. living producing right living. It's what you believe. Amen? Amen. Wrong believing is, 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 is a detriment to your Christian walk. Is that a word? That, it's horrible for your That's Christian walk. That's a word. That's a word. It's bad for your Christian walk to have wrong believing. Just to believe things you've heard or to just not know. But right believing will produce blessings and right living in your life. Amen? It's faith that pleases him and it's faith that resists, resists the enemy. Amen? Oh, yeah. Is that good today? Yeah. Praise the Lord, right? Yeah.